So I wake up today to the Jaguars firing Nathaniel Hackett. Thank God. God was fucking awful. But that's only a third of the problem. Todd Wash needs to go, and so does Blake Bortles. Like I'm more gonna, <clears throat> like I'm more certainly gonna talk about Blake Bortles because you look at it, whoever the new offensive coordinator is gonna be at least for this year. I'm guessing it's Tyrone Wheatley because our running backs have been the only thing worth a damn from our offense this year. And maybe D.D. Westbrook, too, but we have a depleted offensive line. We have receivers where the majority of them can't catch it. And you know what? <coughs> I'm going to apologize for what I said about Marquis Lee at the beginning of the year. I didn't think he'd be this valuable, but you know what? A lot of these balls that Keelan Cole and... Uh, Dante Moncrief and Rashad Green, a lot of these balls that they're all dropping, Marquise Lee catches those. So, he might not be special, but he's a consistent receiver. I think if Chark really, I think we get him back, we have Didi, and hopefully Keelan Cole and um, Rashad Green will be gone. <coughs> I think if DJ Chark really breaks out, we'll actually have a pretty decent receiving core next year. But that remains to be seen because who's going to throw him the fucking ball? I sure as fuck hope it's not Blake Bortles. Because, you know, I'm looking at this shit like... The whole time Blake Bortles has been here, we've had what will now be four different offensive coordinators in five years. <clears throat> First we had Jed Fish sucked. We had Greg Olson. He sucked. Nathaniel Hackett. He sucked. And now whoever the new guy's going to be. So, I'm looking at it now while why these guys have been shit. They've had, they've had, um, I mean, Nathaniel Hackett and Greg Olson got good things out of Blake Bortles, but then the following year he's fucked them over and gotten fired and he's gotten a pass. It's just like, I'm now realizing we can't overlook Blake Bortles anymore. We just can't. Because you look at his rookie season. Oh, he was a rookie. He had a bad year. 2015. <coughs> Even though our record sucked, we, um, he threw 35 touchdowns. Like, we thought he was going to take the next step. 2016. Sucked. 2017. Almost got benched, but... Had a good year, but but had a good year and got us to the playoffs. Then we give him an extension thinking he's going to turn the corner. And we get to this year. This is probably the worst year he's had since his rookie season. <clears throat> and the thing is, you never know what you get with him. He's overlooking and doing dumb shit that he shouldn't have, that he shouldn't be doing as a rookie. Misreading, wobbly ass balls, overthrowing motherfuckers, underthrowing motherfuckers, missing his first read, trying to do too much. It's just like you have weeks where you have weeks where he plays like a fucking all pro, and then you'll have weeks where he plays like he shouldn't be the starting quarterback of a Division three college. It's ridiculous. And now it's more bad than good. So it's not gonna do any it's not gonna get any better. It's time to move on and draft Will Greer. Once we get him and our offensive line is completely healthy, we should have a better year offensively. We got the running game. I mean, even if TJ Yelda doesn't come back, you know, Leonard Fournette's still there, Carlos Hyde's still there. We've we've got we've got the pieces there. Like, you know, yeah, Nathaniel Hackett decided to get fired. Nathaniel Hackett should have been fired, but last week I don't think was his fault. Well, Sunday I don't think was his fault. Other than when we have the drive, when we have the ball at the one with a tie game, and he couldn't even punch it in or get a field goal. Like. At that situation, 
you gotta punch the ball in. Like, four tries from the one yard, or three tries from the one yard line, you have to come away with a touchdown, whether Leonard Fournette's there or not. And it just shows when Leonard Fournette's not there, our offense is completely fucked. Like, it's, like it shows, because... When he's there, it's a totally different offense. It looks like an NFL offense, but when he's not there, it's pathetic. <coughs> so. At this point, I don't even know what we do with, with Bortles, whether we play him the rest of the year or just see what we have with Cody Kessler. Because... We need to we need to get the best quarterback for this draft, <clears throat> which I still think is Will Greer. So I'm not saying ta- I'm not saying tank the year, but it's like at this point I don't know. It's just I don't know what you do when your t- whole team is completely spiraling out of control. Like a lot of changes got to be made next year. Like a lot of people got to go. Definitely Todd Wash. Nathaniel Hackett's already gone. And even if we eat the eat the fucking contract, Blake Bortles has got to go too. Like, trust me, I don't want to start over a quarterback. If I thought there was some way we could salvage Blake Bortles and hopefully make him a starting quarterback, I would be all for it. But at this point, enough's enough. And... For those of you saying, like, and I'm not calling anybody out or saying you're dumb for saying this or anything like that, but, like, saying that we need to, like, find one free agency or trade for one, who are we going to get? Teddy Bridgewater, Tyrod Taylor, uh, Jameis Winston, please. Like, there's no one that's going to rescue this in free agency. The way you get a franchise quarterback is you draft one and build for one. Unless... The Eagles really get stupid and start listening to their fans and want to trade Carson Wentz. That'd be the only guy I would say go after. But if you look at who's around, like, there's really no one that's going to save this. I'm sorry, it's just not. So. It is what it is, man. We get through these next five, like, I hate to even say it like this, let's get through these next five games, and, you know, we got some work to do in the off season for real, get this team back to where it was, and, like, I'm supposed to go to the Redskins game, but, like, honestly, and I never thought I would say this with the Jaguars, but I really might sell my tickets and save my money, like, I need some money right now, now, honestly, and then just, I done drove to Jacksonville once to see him lose. And yesterday, I went to Buffalo to see him lose. So, it's like, I don't even see what the point, I don't even see what the point of going is this year. I mean, I've seen everybody in Jacksonville, but, you know, I don't know. I'm still not 100% sure, but, like, I really might save my money, for real. But, um, I don't know, man. That's all I got. Play the Colts next week. We're probably going to get destroyed. Andrew Luck, who's the best quarterback in the AFC South by default, is probably going to pick up his part. Oh, another thing. Barry Church, he needs to go too. Like, I seriously would be benching him. It's time for Ronnie Harrison. Like, this guy has been, has showed a lot of flashes. Barry Church has looked like shit this year. It's time to see what Ronnie Harrison has. Like, it's time to move him into the starting strong safety spot. Like, like, I'm I'm done with Barry Church. But anyway, that's all I got. We'll see what great adventures happen with the Jacksonville Jaguars next week. This is your boy Jag and off with GenJag.com. And have a great day.